Hi there! Welcome to part 3 of the Robotic Gorilla Lesson by Robocamp. In previous parts, we have already covered the introduction to this lesson and we have also created this gorilla robot together step by step. Now is the time to learn a bit more about this construction, find out which elements we can program and how activating them will influence the robot itself. Now, if you want to complete this stage of the lesson together with me, you will need your robotic gorilla somewhere next to you so that you can see all the elements I'm explaining and talking about on your robot. And if you're looking to access the instructions you can see behind me, head to robocamp.eu. That's where you can gain access and that's also where you can find many more lessons like this one, all for robotics and programming for kids. Now, if you are ready, let's begin. Right above my head, you can see my robotic gorilla. I will use it to show you in real life individual parts and elements of this construction. However, I hope that you have your robotic gorilla somewhere standing near you too, because this way, as you compare what you see on the screen with your robot, you'll be able to understand it much, much better. Now let's take a closer look at this robotic gorilla and let's start maybe with the most important thing, that is which elements in this robot we can actually program. Now of course we cannot program every brick in this robot, but we can program three elements. The first one is the motor and it is right here on the back of the gorilla. Now, motor is the part that is responsible for movement, which means that we can expect something here to move when we activate the motor. The other electronic part is hidden underneath the bananas. It's hidden right here. Now, as you recall, this is our tilt sensor. Now, tilt sensor can detect any changes in its position. And this is something that we can also use while coding. Finally, the third and arguably the most important electronic element of this construction is right here. This is the smart hub, okay? Smart hub is very important because it serves as a link between the robot and your programming software. It connects them together. Furthermore, once you place your charged batteries inside the smart hub, it will also become a power source for all the other electronics connected to it. That is the motor and the tilt sensor. So basically, without the smart hub, none of the other electronics will work. Now, I want you to pay a closer attention to this branch with bananas. Now, you already know that we have a tilt sensor right here. And one of the ways to activate it is to shake, is to shake this branch with bananas. Mm -hmm. Now, we can use this movement, this event of shaking, in the code, it can trigger a certain event from another, uh, from another electronic element, for example. This is something that we will use to encourage the gorilla to move further. Now, uh, let's take a look to look straight into the eyes of the gorilla robot because as you will see, this head can loosely move to the right, to the left, okay? And this is really cool movement that you will also be able to notice as the gorilla is walking forward, okay? Because his head will shake to the left and to the right slightly. 
Okay, this is why we've used a smooth non-friction pin to attach this element. Now, what's more, I want you to pay attention to the shape of this girl's head. It has a visibly big jaw, but also if you look closer, you can see the teeth canines of this gorilla. So I would say it's a very similar to a real one. I have already hinted that this gorilla is going to walk forward, but how is it going to happen? Is it going to magically move its legs? No, we have the motor for exactly that. And on this cross section, you can see how this movement, how this motion produced by the motor will be transferred to legs on both sides. Let me also show this to you on a close-up. The movement starts right here, inside the motor. The head of the motor is connected to this black gear, which you can see mounted on this small red axle. So we can expect that this black gear will rotate at the same speed as the motor does. Next, the movement is transferred to this yellow or tan crown gear. However, notice something here. The black gear has 12 teeth, but the crown gear has 20 teeth. This means that as the movement is transferred, it will lose some of its speed. But don't worry, it's nothing very serious, because instead, this gorilla, this movement will gain some more power. Mm -hmm. Now this crown gear is actually mounted on an axle. It goes right through here, okay? Right through here. This means that while it is rotating is at the same time making the right and the left leg of this gorilla move. It's pretty neat. You can see exactly how the gorilla will move on the animation behind me. Now notice what an interesting movement this is. Now those blue transparent wheels are rotating, however in practice they actually lift and lower those four limbs in turns. That's partially thanks to their position. Notice that one on one side, uh, the left leg of my gorilla is attached to this, uh, on this lowest position on this wheel. And on the other side, the right limb of my gorilla is actually attached to the highest point right here. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing you might notice from this animation is that actually, since the forelimbs are attached to the hind legs of the gorilla. This way, even though only the front limbs are powered by the motor, well, actually, the ones in the back will move too. And now, all that's left to do is to create a program that will allow our gorilla to move forward. Thank you so much for learning a bit more about this construction with me. And now is the time to start coding. So I'll see you in the next part of this lesson, the last one, where we show you how to create a program in Scratch for the robotic gorilla. If you enjoyed this lesson, leave us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.